viewers, welcome to the Dateline Northeast, a program that gives an overview of the developments in India's Northeast region. I'm your host Chandrakala and the highlights of today's program are Home Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurates project for effective border management in Assam. Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan launches oil projects in Northeast. and chapter could celebrations in Mizoram vows visitors from across India. Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh inaugurated a border electronically dominated QRT interception technique project and a comprehensive integrated border management system on India-Bangladesh border in Dhubri district of Assam. The project aims to tackle cross-border crimes and provide respite to BSF personnel from round-the-clock patrolling. A report. Border-related issues including trans-border crimes, border fencing, smuggling of narcotics and trafficking had always been the agenda of talks between the governments of India and Bangladesh. However, in order to tackle these issues effectively, Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh recently inaugurated the much-needed advanced electronic surveillance system along the 61-kilometer India-Bangladesh border in Thubri district of Assam to tackle cross-border crimes and provide respite to BSF personnel from round-the-clock patrolling. Addressing the gathering, Singh said that the new project under CIBMS will equip the unfenced areas along the River Rhine border with sensors, enabling the troops to take prompt action against intrusion. <laughs> इन्हीं पांच वर्षों के भीतर ही हम इंडो बांग्लादेश का जो यह धुबरी का क्षेत्र है हम इसको पूरी तरह से सील करेंगे आज मुझे आप सबको बताते हुए यह बेहद खुशी हो रही है रहने वालों एकसठ किलोमीटर तक की इस सीमा को पूरी तरह से टेक्नोलॉजिकल सोल्यूशन के द्वारा सील करने की मुकम्मल व्यवस्था कर दी गई और उसकी लॉन्चिंग आज मैंने और आपके मुख्यमंत्री श्री सर्वानंद जी सोनवाल ने कर इसमें और कुछ भी सुधार करना है मैं समझता हूं कि आगामी दो तीन महीने में जो भी इसमें इंप्रूवमेंट करना है अथवा जो भी इसका अपग्रेडेशन करना है वह काम भी जल्दी पूरा हो जाए Border electronically dominated QRT interception technique is a project to install technical systems under the comprehensive integrated border management system which enables BSF to equip Indo-Bangla borders with different kind of sensors in the unfenced river Rhine area of Brahmaputra and its tributaries. The 61-kilometer border in Dhubri district, where the Brahmaputra enters Bangladesh, comprises vast stretches of sandbank and innumerable river channels, making vigilance a daunting task for the BSF, especially during the rainy season. <laughs> तब तक उस राज्य अथवा देश का मेरे बहनों भाइयों किसी भी सूरत में विकास नहीं हो सकता हमारी सरकार ने सुरक्षा को लेकर विशेष सावधानी बरती केवल असम अथवा भारत देश में ही नहीं बल्कि सारे देश भर में सुरक्षा के ऊपर हमारी सरकार ने विशेष बल दिया लार्ज नंबर ऑफ बी एस एफ पर्सनल गैदर टू बी पार्ट ऑफ द इनग्रल सेरेमनी there have been a number of conflicts and cross-border crimes, a strife along the border areas which have harmed the nation's social fabric and integrity. However, adopting such electronic system along the Indo-Bangla border will help resolving border issues, thereby providing relief to the troops from round-the-clock human surveillance. Singh also said that at places where it was not possible to erect fences due to geographical barriers, the BOLD QIT will prove to be effective. Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan, who was on a recent visit to Assam, rolled out a slew of projects worth Rs 1,500 crore across the state. Pradhan inaugurated and dedicated several oil and gas projects by the oil PSUs in Assam. He also announced that the centre is planning to make Assam a hub of oil trade in Southeast Asia. In a major thrust towards bringing development to the Northeast region, the centre has been playing proactive role in fulfilling the same. 
As pointed by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, North East can be the new engine for India's growth story. And keeping this in mind, many developmental projects and schemes have been implemented for the region's development. Also, special emphasis has been laid on making Northeast a gateway to Southeast Asia. Realizing the potential of Assam, which boasts natural resources in abundance, Union Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan dedicated and inaugurated several oil and gas projects by the oil PSUs in Assam. Besides that, he dedicated a number of completed projects in different sectors worth over Rs 1500 crore. He asserted that the centre plans to make the state of Assam a major world trade centre in the export of petroleum products to Southeast Asia. Assam or Pura, Tripura, Arunachal, Nagaland, Manipur, ये सारा इलाका में गैस की अपार बंदा है। इसको उत्पादित ज्यादा करना और प्रोडक्शन बढ़ाना, इन राज्यों में वितरित करना, उसको बाहर बिक्री करके यहाँ की प्रॉफिट बढ़ाना। इसके लिए इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर चाहिए। हम लोगों ने 9,225 करोड़ रुपया खर्चा करके 1,650 किलोमीटर गोहाटी से आगे सिक्किम जाएगा, अरुणाचल जाएगा, मिजोरम जाएगा, मेघालय जाएगा, नागालैंड जाएगा, त्रिपुरा जाएगा, मणिपुर जाएगा। Pradhan also announced the commencement of work of the K.D. Malavia National Oil Museum in Guwahati, which will be set up at an investment of Rs 104 crore over the next five and a half years. The museum will showcase the rich history and heritage of the petroleum industry of India. Focusing on the development of the state, Pradhan asserted that under activist policy, Assam will become an important centre of world trading as it will send petrol and diesel to Myanmar, Bhutan, Bangladesh and the Southeast Asian countries. The eight oil and gas projects dedicated to the nation includes upgradation of pump stations of Naharkatiya Baroni crude oil pipeline, greenfield, rail fed POL, storage terminal at Digboy, capacity augmentation of LPG bottling plant in Silcha, GGS Barhola to Jorhat CTF crude oil trunk pipeline replacement, capacity augmentation of LPG bottling plant in North Kohati, to name a few. आसाम के अंदर जब अमेरिका में तेल भेजा था पेंसिल्वेनिया में उन दिनों में गोहा आसाम के अंदर अपर आसाम में भी तेल भेजा था बंगाई गांव नुमालीगढ़ गोहाटी और दिग्बुल चार चार रिफाइनरी इस देश में है क्रूड ऑयल पहले यहां मिलता था आने वाले दिनों में जिस प्रकार की नीति हम लोग बना रहे हैं वो इंडस्ट्री ऑयल और अन्य निजी निवेशक आसाम के अंदर आसाम की रॉयल्टी बढ़ाते हुए आसाम की टैक्स बढ़ाते हुए और तेल और गैस उत्पादित करेंगे तो उसकी सीधी सीधी फायदा नॉर्थ ईस्ट को होगा आसाम को होगा Highlighting the availability of rich natural resources in Assam, Pradhan informed that 1,259 crore rupees is being invested for the bamboo ethanol fuel project. It, however, deserves a special mention that 2,500 crore rupees is being invested in Bongaigao refinery. He also inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of several oil and gas projects in Tripura and said that ONGC can play a vital role in transforming the state and thus help in making a new India. Well, moving on, handloom weaving is a traditional occupation for a broad range of people, especially for the women folk in all the eight states of Northeast region. Among all the states, Manipur is known for its rich handloom culture with great aesthetic value. However, the six Assam rifles installed wooden weaving looms to further improve the weaving skills of women and to boost employment opportunities in remote areas. A special report. The Northeast region occupies an important and unique place in the indigenous textile culture of India. Hand looms and handicrafts form an integral part of the lifestyle of the people in the Northeast region. Women in this region are born weavers and are actively engaged in weaving activities. For many, Handloom weaving is one of the indispensable sources of income and over the years, the women folk of the region have churned out unrivaled handloom products. 
However, to further enhance their weaving skills and, and to empower them economically, the six Assam Rifles under the ages of Headquarter 9 Sector Assam Rifles undertook an ambitious military civic action project by providing them with seven wooden weaving looms in Hinopopi village. Aim to provide uh, the basic amenities, the livelihood to the people who are in the far off region, the remote location of Manipur. With that in mind, my company operating base, which is in Andro, they identified this village and they identified the potential of the women folk over here. And we realized that they have a shortage of the wooden weaving machines and uh, thereafter we processed the case. And today we are very happy that uh, seven wooden weaving machines are being handed over to the self help com uh, women community over here. During the commencement of the project, a total of seven wooden weaving loom sets were handed over to the self-help groups. It however deserves a special mention that the project is initiated with an aim to empower women folk of the village by equipping them with these weaving machines and making women self-independent and to sell their products. However, the initiative undertaken by the six Assam Rifles received an overwhelming response from the beneficiaries who conveyed their gratitude to the Assam Rifles for providing a means to empower themselves. <laughs> With the rise of demand in fabrics and shawls of Manipur in the national and international market, initiatives like this not only generate employment opportunities for women, but in the long run will empower them to lead a dignified life. The traditional skill of handloom weaving is not only a matter of status symbol for women in the state, but also forms a crucial part of their social economic condition and lifestyle. Let us now take a look at some of the events that made news in the Northeast recently. Chief Minister of Manipur N. Biran Singh recently launched a La Bike, a mobile laboratory system featured on a motorcycle which would provide diagnostic facilities at the doorstep of the people living in remote and hilly areas of the state. La Bike is already operational in some states of the country. The launch was held at the main auditorium of JNIMS in Fall East. For the first phase, a total of 20 La Bike will be provided in 20 primary health centers located at Hill and Valley districts of the state. Singh further said that the remaining 65 PHCs would be provided soon. Altogether, 85 La Bike will provide doorstep services across the state. Along with that, Singh also laid the foundation stones for the construction of Ladies Hostel 2, Jens Hostel 3, and Infectious Disease Center at Jawaharlal Nehru Institute of Medical Sciences, Imphal. To promote girls' education, especially those studying in the government schools in Tripura, the state government recently awarded the girls' students with bicycles. Chief Minister Biblab Kumar Dev, Education Minister Ratan Lal Nath and other dignitaries launched a scheme in capital Agartala's Maharani Tulshibati Ucha Madhyamik Balika Vidyalaya. Under the scheme, 28,006 girls studying in class 9 in any government school in Tripura will get the bicycle. During the program, more than 800 bicycles were distributed among the students of various schools. Students also expressed their gratitude and said that it will save their time and energy during commuting to school and for tuition classes. Chief Minister of Assam Sarbananda Sonowal recently inaugurated the reconstructed Assam House in New Delhi. People from Assam and those residing in the national capital gathered to witness the momentous ceremony. The new Assam House will provide upgraded facilities to the natives of Assam who usually visit New Delhi for work or any official purpose. Moreover, it will cater to the need of students, professionals and patients of the state. Addressing the gathering, Sonowal termed the day as an important day in the history of Assam. Built at a cost of more than 50 crores rupees, the Assam House comprises 74 rooms including VVIP rooms, suits and double-bedded room. The battalion of nine sector Assam rifles under the ages of IGAR organized a social service event in Kangpokpi district, wherein as a contribution towards the society, four computer sets were distributed to the government primary school Kaitilmanbi. The computers were installed with an aim to educate the underprivileged students of far-flung areas to become computer literate and further assist them to make a positive contribution towards society. Over 200 students, teachers and locals attended the event and appreciated the SM Rifles for their contribution to the school. A 
A three-day-long international and tribal animation film festival was recently held in Northeastern Hill University. The festival is being jointly organized by the Department of Anthropology of the Northeastern Hill University and the Trust for Tribal Art, Culture and Knowledge, Delhi. Artists, storytellers and filmmakers from indigenous communities across the world took part in the event to share the films and experiences. The aim of the festival was to create an engaging forum for filmmakers from the Northeast and from the indigenous communities to present their work and forge links with professional collaborators and media enthusiasts from across the country and the world. For the first time in Mizoram, an international art exhibition was held at Vanapa Hall of the State. The exhibition was organized by the Council for Cultural Relations in collaboration with Art Novelty Gallery Izol and Art and Culture Department. In the exhibition, 19 painters showcase their artwork. International painters from Bangladesh, Bhutan and Slovakia also took part in the exhibition. Information and Public Relations Minister Pu Lalrotikma was present as the chief guest. Along with the whole nation, Maha Shivratri was celebrated with spiritual fervor all across the Northeast states. In Meghalaya, the Mahadev Kola Dam, which is believed to be 150 years, came alive with Shivratri festivity. Shiva devotees thronged the temple to offer prayers and to seek blessings. A grand mela was also organized with thousands of devotees thronged to the place with milk and holy water to worship Lord Shiva. Whereas in Tripura, thousands of devotees also thronged the temples of Lord Shiva and worshipping him for well-being in their lives. Other than a shibari at Central Road, hundreds of devotees thronged the Assam Rifle Shiva temples, which is one of the oldest in the capital city, which was established by the Manikya Maharajas who ruled the state for more than 500 years. Moving on, initiated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana has enabled a large number of youth of the country to take up industry-relevant skill training that is helping them lead a better life. In Nagaland, many unemployed youths are benefiting from the scheme. In line with that, a leading vocational training provider is imparting hospitality and aviation training to local youths who say that such training has helped them earn a better livelihood. A report. Under the flagship scheme of Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, the Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana or PMKVY has helped a large number of youth in and around the country. Adhering to that, the centre has set up an ambitious target to train, including skilling and reskilling of 400 million people by 2022. However, in a major trust towards imparting skill training to the unemployed youths of Nagaland, Emporium Training and Consultancy, a leading registered vocational training provider, is imparting skill training to the youths in an aviation and hospitality sector. The branch in Dimapur was opened in June last year, funded by the State Labor and Employment Department under the national flagship scheme Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Vikas Yojana. I came here uh, and took the admission and uh, I've been here for almost two weeks now mm -hmm. and the environment is really nice, I really like the environment, the teachers are very friendly, mm -hmm. they are like families to us mm -hmm. and they teach us in such a way that they don't just do books but they teach us through their experience which is a very good opportunity for us. As per the target set by the state government, it is currently training 220 candidates at a quarter which runs for a duration of three months. It aims to train 880 candidates in the financial year. It is worth noting that so far, 96% trainees have been successfully placed across reputed companies in India and overseas including Oberoi, Mumbai, Jet Airways and SpiceJet, etc. for cabin crew. Moreover, 16 Emporium students got selected as cabin crew by Go Airways. I got my placement in SpiceJet Airline as a cabin crew through Emporium Training Institute in Dimapur. As of which I would like to convey my gratitude to the Department of Employment, Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Government of Nagaland, Emporium Training Institute and Pradhan Mantri Koshal Vikas Yojana which has given us an opportunity to grab our career. Taking this opportunity, I would like to encourage the youths of Nagaland, those who are interested in hospitality and aviation sector, to come forward and grab this opportunity. Emporium Training and Consultancy is under Directorate General of Training, Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, and Government of India. 
It is also registered under Deen Dayal Ubadaya Gramin Koshalya Yojana, North East Rural Livelihood Project, Tourism and Hospitality Sector Skill Council, to name a few, and impaneled in almost all the states of North East and other states in the country. We have been working with the government of Nagaland for the past about seven years. And uh, in the last seven years, we have already trained more than 5,000 Naga youths. And they are currently working in various organizations globally. The training center has attracted many graduates and postgraduates, even though only a minimum qualification of 10 passed is required for availing the free training. The Emporium has recently signed MOUs with recruiting companies to assure job security to the trainees. It also keeps track of the trained candidates for up to a year after training. Next, we have contribution by the small tea growers in the Northeast region, especially in the state of Assam, to the national tea production has been immense. In a major thrust towards improving the economic status of the tea growers in the state, the Chief Minister of the state, Sarvananda Sonwal, launched the Mission Assam Quality that by and large will benefit the small tea growers. A report. Although China takes the first place as the largest tea producing country in the world, India is nowhere behind. All thanks to the state of Assam, the largest tea-producing state in the country. The state houses nearly 800 tea plantations and it however deserves a special mention that the total tea produced by Assam and other northeastern states are produced by small tea growers. However, with an aim to encourage and provide financial assistance to Assam's small tea growers to add value to the tea industry, Assam Chief Minister Sarbanandan Sonowal recently launched Missan Assam Quality in Assam Agriculture University. Thousands of small tea growers from the state received cash incentives from the state government under the new scheme. <laughs> Under under the new tea plantation scheme 2018 to 2019, each small tea growers from 33 districts of Assam were given 5,000 rupees per bigha and the maximum allocation is 20 bigha. Small tea growers welcomed the scheme as it would improve their financial status and motivate them to improve their farming skill. Sonowal also inaugurated training of small tea growers on tea quality, which will be conducted in 101 blocks in a phase-wise manner. The training program will include sessions on how to grow tea in a scientific manner, right from nursery plantation, plucking, marketing, pruning, besides theoretical training in the matters like selection and preparation of plant, soil rehabilitation and soil sampling procedure, to name a few. On the occasion, Sonoval also presented a 75% subsidy to six small tea growers groups for procurement of leaf transport vehicles. Asani Pasilu, Dohadatoka, Gotigamo Dubigamati Koisilu, Dubigamati Kurimu Puli, Logwat, Arpuli, Akinat, Hohai Kuise, Ar Bagan Subsequent Kui Asu. Posha to buy my Ohom Sorak, Dona Bazan. Jo Posha Vilata, Yem Posha Lake, Hom Machine Kid Lake, Machine Liata, Hom Plucking a Machine Liata, or Udishat Capacity Set Ka Machine Liata, Lakin Hamarai Lebarga, it Napo Blemta. ये प्रॉब्लम के लिए हम मशीन लिया है टाइम का कवर आ जाएगा बारिश का मौसम का जो भी हो चौक चतुल हो जाएगा जो भी मशीन लेगा मशीन लगा तो टाइम कवर हो जाएगा वाइल लॉन्चिंग द इनिशिएटिव सोनोवाल आल्सो अर्ज टू स्मॉल टी ग्रोअर्स टू वर्क विद डेडिकेशन इन ऑर्डर टू प्रोड्यूस क्वालिटी टी फॉर ट्रांसफॉर्मिंग असम इन अ फ्रंट रैंकिंग स्टेट एंड कैप्चर द वर्ल्ड मार्केट such steps by the center will not only increase production of high quality tea but will allow the farmers to earn a better livelihood thereby contributing towards the country's economic growth this will also increase the value of assam tea in the global market fairs and festivals form an essential part of the lifestyle of the people of the northeast each state comprises of different ethnic tribes that has its own unique way of celebrating their festivals 
Recently, Mizoram came alive with the celebration of Chapcharkut festival that holds great cultural significance. Let's have a look. Mizoram, the land of hills, is known for its aesthetic natural beauty and is inhabited by numerous colorful tribes that make the place all the more beautiful. Each tribe has its own unique way of celebrating festivals. Mizoram comes to its full glory when it is time to celebrate Chapchar Kut festival. The Chapchar Kut is one of the oldest festivals of Mizoram and has a great cultural significance. It is an annual harvest festival celebrated in the month of March. It is a week-long festival and celebrated with great pomp and gaiety. Mizo Chapchar Kut has become a tourist attraction. And then uh, because of celebration of this chapter good, we see uh, the number of uh, uh, visitors increasing every year. Not only from uh, parts of India, not only that we have a number of foreign tourists also coming during uh, the chapter good because this is uh, the time where you can see, uh, you can see the misos in our culture, in the, in the, in, in, this is the best time, one of the best time to visit Mizoram is this uh, during the month of March when Chapchar Kut's celebration is going on. Chapchar Kut marks the preparation before the onset of the sowing season and is celebrated during the time when jungles are cleared. Bamboos and trees are cut down and the land is prepared for jhum cultivation. Folk dance and music mark the celebration of Chapchar Kut. Moreover, Chapchakut is a festival held in anticipation of golden harvest. Young men and women were seen dressed in colorful traditional attire, performing the famous chiro or bamboo dance that left the visitors awestruck. I'm the first time coming here and joining this program. Chapchakut is an uh, exceptional one. I uh, am first time Mizoram coming here and join this program. Really excellent. The beautiful state of Mizoram is the hidden gem of Northeast, and the Chapcharkut festival adds to the glory and beauty of the state, while also boosting the tourism sector and contributing to the state's economy. The festival is held across Mizoram and lasts for a couple of days and everyone, irrespective of age and gender, looks forward to be a part of this annual fest. With that, we have come to the end of this episode of Roving Report. Do connect with us through our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter at anyindia underscore ani. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel to get latest news updates from the Northeast. I'm your host Chandrakala, signing off. Goodbye and take care.